should we, uh, so we're at 150. Good to start? Perfect. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. Let me first uh, say you're, you're seeing one speaker up here rather than the original three that were on the agenda. All three have had different combinations of personal and flight issues. Uh, so Min from Facebook uh, wound up actually stuck in Hawaii, which seems like a very good problem to have. Uh, Rob and Sunit on our side are, uh, are in California and stomach bug respectively. So I'm going to be the stand-in for the day. Uh, my name is Kyle Forster. I'm the founder of Big Switch. Uh, I was also sort of one of the you know, kind of one of the handful of people involved in this particular initiative that we're, that we're going to talk about today. First of all, how many people here have heard of um, open compute hardware? I'm going to assume this is going to be. And how many have like more than like the one paragraph, but could probably like write like a page about what it is? All right, so like about half-ish. I'm just trying to measure where, it, where, where I think it'd be most interesting to spend time. Let me, uh, you know, feel free to ask questions anytime. Um, please ask from the mics because the whole thing's being videotaped. Um, if you don't mind indulging me, I'll give a little bit of background on, on Big Switch and the company so you see where we're coming from. But most of this is actually us kind of as a, as a user here and our experience and our journey setting up, uh, you know, setting up a, a small OpenStack cloud with the goal of, we actually had this explicit goal, can we use the exact same hardware that's in production at Facebook and you know, use that for a small scale OpenStack cloud for our office? Uh, the implications of it would be far beyond that, but it was an interesting sort of limited time sprint type of goal, and I'm going to talk about what we found. Let me start off a little bit about Big Switch so you see a bit where we're coming from. Our, our company very specifically takes network designs that are in production at Google, at Microsoft, at Facebook, at Amazon, uh, and we package those designs for enterprise, service provider, and government use. So in some cases, it's even the exact same switch hardware that's running at Google right, or running at Facebook. And we write the software on top. That's our primary business. In some cases, the adaptation is more significant. Right, Our software runs on top of Dell, and we changed a lot of the management interfaces to make it relevant for you know, data centers that are kind of operated more traditionally. Um, if you've never heard of us before, that's normal. The companies I'm very, very proud the company's on, on a tear since we launched our products, uh, our first bare metal products in 2014. Um, it's a, it, I don't know, no need to go too far. It's a, it's, it's a really fun time for the company. Uh, our big news here at the show this week is that we just announced jointly with Verizon that for their very large scale OpenStack NFV pod, they've selected that to run on big switch switching. So. You know, for us, this is a kind of wonderful validation of the work that we're doing. Uh, we've been part of a, a number of very, very high-scale OpenStack clouds over the last 12 months. I think, you know, zooming back from the company, more specific around this, we do a lot of work with the Open Compute Project. Um, we're, right now, the company's, we're actually the single largest uh, contributor of software back to the Open Compute Project in the form of an open source version of our Switch OS called Open Network Linux. Uh, FBOS, face Facebook's switching operating system, has now been ported over to FBOS. Sorry, FBOS has been now been ported over to Open Network Linux. Um, you know, Microsoft's SAIC has sort of a roadmap to port over to Open Network Linux. So this particular part of our business is working with these hyperscale operators who write their own switching software uh, and run that on top of the the open network Linux layer of our open source. It basically means that we wound up spending a, a, a ton of time with the open compute project. I think and as a result, we've gotten some level of you know, wonderful access and, and great hardware and got a little bit of time. We spend certainly a ton of time with the Facebook Wedge, um, yeah, certainly with the Wedge 40, with the Wedge 100. Uh, and I think this was sort of the, a natural outgrowth of that work. So here's the rack. This is, these are actually shots, and we'll come back to a few of these. <coughs> these are shots of 
an actual OCP rack that was mocked up to be you know, the exact same hardware that's in production there, running up in our labs, and our sort of journey of, of getting the thing up and running. Now first let me ask, who here has, a lot of people have heard of OCP hardware. How many people have actually touched OCP hardware? Good, that's great, that's actually a lot more than I expected, so that's about a quarter. So some of this you'll probably find pretty remedial, but hopefully some of it's interesting. I think for the, the next bit's more for people who haven't had the chance to actually touch it. I'd read a lot about it, but this was my first time actually touching the hardware itself. Second. Um, the, <laughs> the OCP rack is, 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 is 21 inches wide, and the size matters. Uh, <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for, any, for anybody who hasn't, uh, you, you know, wh why did they choose this rack size? Right, I mean, this is actually really painful for us. The rack actually has to sit separately from the rest of our rows. Um, you know, it causes all kinds of sort of headaches with our ops guys about getting the thing in. Um, it becomes really important because for folks who aren't as close to it, the A3 servers, you know, I don't know if you ever played with like, you know, like twins or micro chassis, but this is a really clean 3-2 RU servers can sit side by side in this rack very, very comfortably. And probably just as important, okay, so you, you might have a little bit of play with the motherboard design, but you can fit 60 disks per 2RU, or in open compute terms, OU, right? Slightly different size, but the, that kind of disk uh, width layout gives you actually this really intense density in a 21 inch track, that in a 19 inch track, you're actually losing a fair number of inches. So there is a really I think there's a really good argument to say, hey, these 21 inch racks are an awesome innovation. Uh, the downside is for those of us with kind of traditional sort of you know, floor layouts, power layouts, it's a real headache to truck it in. But I think there are a couple of cases where you know, this innovation should be considered by groups at, at large well beyond you know, the football field size data centers. So 21 versus 19 inch. Um, one of the really, there are two really important innovations that I think are kind of just make this thing really nice. Um, everything that a human can touch is green. And that might not seem like that big of a deal, especially if you're like more of a software person, but if you're kind of a hardware person and you wind up like racking and stacking stuff fairly often, this is actually a really, really, really nice thing. Everything is designed to be field replaceable and field replaceable very easily. So you can actually field replace, you don't need a screwdriver, you don't need a drill, and that's, that winds up being like kind of a big deal when you're monkeying around in a lab, and certainly a big deal at scale, but even if we're just like a one or two rack, everybody on our side noticed it. Like everybody noticed how much easier it was just to move stuff around in the rack. Um, now, part of the innovation here, they, they claim they get a 30% increase in, in power utilization. I don't know if that's really, I, I have no kind of comment on that other than it's a claim, but the, um, the power distribution itself is actually DC power that's in exposed rails inside the rack. And power in is actually like vampire style taps that come in from the compute nodes and the storage nodes. So on the one hand, you get this really nice benefit. You actually save a ton of power because you don't wind up going through you know, AC-DC transformation, you don't wind up going through DC-DC step down. That alone is actually a huge benefit. Um, but like, don't touch the rack. <laughs> it's really important. Um, we had like, Uh, the dongle is actually really awesome. Has anybody here ever held a, an OCP debug dongle? Uh, a 
detail. You're kind of nodding along, I'm guessing. What a, I'm curious to get your, I'll go into my take. What was your take the first time you fooled around with it? <laughs> the, uh, so this thing is a great idea. And again, like a lot of the design trade-offs that they made, you know, I'm trying to show that these are actually, these are smart ideas, but they came with trade-offs. So the goal was to have, you know, basically 100% IPMI, no separate, you know, no separate serial access. And like if you ever, you know, futzed around trying to find the right damn serial cable or like, you know, uh, this is actually, it's one of these things that looks, the idea of doing everything over IPMI is one of these things that looks great on paper. And then practically when you're actually monkeying around in a lab and moving shit around, it's actually a complete pain in the neck. And so the idea that, you know, this debug dongle is that you can actually get very quick LED displays on, like, I mean, really simple, like, you know, basic sort of power check stuff kind of come in and out of the different nodes in the rack. <coughs> it's the exact same debug dongle that works across Wedge, the switches, um, Leopard, the servers, and then Knox, the storage. So you can literally just go around with one in your hand and it goes into all of the different, you know, at least standard, like the, the, the Facebook path through the OCP stuff. So it actually turns out to be a great idea because frankly about like, I don't know, it's like about every 45 minutes or so with our first like two days in the rack, we're plugging it in and just looking at LED colors coming out. I, I don't know if you've had the same experience. So the numbering like helps a ton. Um, and then the neat thing is it actually has USB access in and out. So you're just playing with USB cables instead of futzing around with terminal cables, which is really, 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 really nice. Uh, So again, let me come back. It's one of these neat trade-offs. It looks really good on paper to have IPMI only access. It creates all these basic, like in the lab headaches. And I can only imagine at a thousand racks, that's a, a lot more of a, it's a thousand X the headache. Uh, even at like 10 racks, the stuff is a headache. And the debug dongle is the, uh, is, is the way that they address that headache. And it's very elegant. So, so far, I hope what you've seen is like, hey, there are a series of design trade-offs that they had to make. All right, hey, no power dissipation. Okay, that means that everything human can touch is good. Okay, you know, there are parts that you really, really can't touch. Like, hey, all IPMI, that means the dongle. Now, here's one design trade-off that specifically for OpenStack, I actually think is a really, really big deal. Um, on Leopard, the servers only have one ethernet port. And like, there's a lot of control and data stuff that has to go in and out of OpenStack compute nodes. Right. I mean, at least in our sort of reference topology, we literally have like you know, seven different logical, very separate logical networks, control networks, right? That go in and out of a compute node for a full you know, under cloud and over cloud. And running all of these on different VLANs in and out of the same Ethernet port kind of seems like it's possible, but <coughs> the trouble that you wind up having is startup conditions, where you have to do things like you know, make sure that the VLAN tagging that you're using for first boot is sort of synonymous or synchronous with the VLAN tagging that you're going to use for separate API, OpenStack API control. And like the which VLANs you set up first actually winds up it's incredibly frat, like it, you, this ordering has to be exactly right or the whole thing falls apart really fast. So there's just that very practical headache and then there's the obvious one of, hey, with a single ethernet port, right, this is a real single point of failure. It's kind of, you know, we don't need to go into that. That's, I think, obvious for everybody in the room. Um, but this is like for OpenStack use, this was actually like the workflow around getting the undercloud up and running and then the overcloud going this was actually the single biggest non-obvious headache that, that we ran into. Now, newer versions of the OCP hardware have options for the mezzanine card with two ports. And so suddenly, like, that's kind of a game changer, right? And it's not the exact stuff that's running in prod, but, like, it makes a huge, I think, you know, two ports is plenty for the work, or the kind of work that we all need to do together.
so we were able to wrestle through a lot of the first boot stuff. Um, and we came to a happy ending, right? We are actually currently now running a, you know, a nice sized, you know, a nice little kind of small dev testy sized OpenStack cloud up and running on the exact same hardware that Facebook is using in prod. So that was a big point of celebration for us. Um, you know, just some of the fine print, the stuff that kind of scares us about even, you know, certainly about using this in like enterprise settings or service provider settings. Um, you know, the single ethernet port is probably the biggest kind of scariest thing. Um, and then there's some other bits and pieces. Um, we had to upstream a patch for a disk estimation bug. Um, UEFI boot mode is not, uh, was not supported on the installer, on the fuel installer that we were using, so we had to boot up in legacy mode. And then there was definitely some like IPMI versus, we tried the vendor IPMI, and we spent a lot of time wrestling with it. We finally got it to work. Um, Open BMC, which is you know more the OCP sort of style of doing this, is a is a we think a bit of a cleaner path, but we timed out before being able to use it. Um, we just solved some of the headaches. So it works, but you know, with some lint on it. So let me finish up with this idea, of, okay, so where, where to go from here? And first of all, I was amazed and impressed that a quarter of the people here have actually touched OCP hardware. That's a lot more than I was expecting, and that's a great thing. Uh, if it's specifically the exact version that you know, the Facebook team has in prod, well, I'd be really interested to hear from you. But I think let me th end on the, this idea of, hey, what, what path for everybody else, what path do you wanna take forward with this? Um, there's one that says, hey, look, for special use cases, this stuff actually today is, is pretty, pretty damn good. The thing that jumps out at you is the density. I mean, like a half rack, we're running like just a massive amount of compute and storage. And so if what you're looking for is like super, super high density and you're willing to live with a lot of other trade-offs, especially like you know, the single point of failure on the ethernet link and some of the headache about getting the thing up and running, this thing today might be great. So we have one environment on our side, uh, it's uh, in one of our engineering continuous integration environments. Like it's a CI environment, so actually the density of the compute and storage matters a lot. Um, resiliency doesn't really matter, you know, it, at all for this particular environment, or at least not not much. Um, and since we've already done it once, we don't mind paying the, the the setup headache. So for that like really specific case, this is actually useful today. But would you say it's a general purpose OpenStack cloud? Right, for all the different workloads, at least that we have, running both in our engineering labs as well as our public-facing stuff, it's not, we're not moving our general purpose OpenStack cloud over to it. So this would be a very, very specialist uh, use on our end. There's the pragmatist argument that says, hey, instead of using the exact stuff Facebook has in production, use minor variants, right? The 21 inch versus the 19 inch rack, that at least for us was the biggest decision and there's kind of 19 inch things that are, you sacrifice quite a bit of density, but they're pretty close to the Facebook, you know, like to the Facebook prod parts and there's certainly OCP designs for them. And then whether or not you want to use the exposed power rack, you know, that's you know, sort of up to you. But I, I would say if, for a, if you're gonna take a very pragmatic approach to building a general purpose OpenStack cloud and you want to use OCP hardware, I would really urge you to think strongly about using OCP-ish hardware, the enterprise adapted versions of the stuff, if you want to get going today. <clears throat> and then the last is if you want to take the idealist approach. At least it's been our experience, and Bob, I saw you when you're walking in, I'm guessing it's, well, I'd be curious to hear from you. Um, it's been our experience that the OCP community is incredibly easy to work with. Very, very, very flexible. It's, it's easy, at this point, the community is small enough, it's very easy to get things on the roadmap. So if you wanna instead take the idealist path and say, hey, I wanna be part of shaping this community to make it 
more relevant for the general purpose OpenStack clouds. I think a lot of that work is already happening with some of the work that they're doing, but there's always going to be edges to say, hey, here's a particular OpenStack cloud where we, that we'd like to get on the hardware roadmap. Uh, you know, if you want to take this, hey, let's modify and mold OCP for OpenStack, please talk to me after. This is an area where we're really interested as a big software contributor in the form of Open Network Linux. We're really interested in seeing OCP grow and OCP successful and OCP growing out of the, you know, the couple of, kind of use cases and the couple of verticals where it's being used today. And if there's anything that I can personally do or my team can do to help you get you plugged into the right people, this is something that you know, we feel strongly about as part of the mission of our company. Uh, and we'd love to help out wherever we can. I'll be you know, downstairs at the Big Switch booth after this. So thank you, everybody. And let me end there and take any questions as, uh, as you have them. Thanks a lot.